it is bones and in this one let's do a topic video i've kind of been thinking about doing this one for a while but with the new images released of the dark knight trilogy figures from mcfarlane some of these topics came up you know while i was thinking about these releases and seeing some of the comments online so i thought what better time than any to go ahead and do this video now this one is going to be on lies and stigmas that are put onto mcfarland but specifically the dc multiverse line that i just think are not warranted or are not true now of course as always some of this is based on fact so i can see where people are coming from but we need to, you know, get out of the murky water and clear it up a little bit. So I have a couple of topics to go through, but let's go ahead and get into them. Now, the first one will be McFarlane DC Multiverse figures do not come with accessories or extra hands. Now, this one kind of makes me laugh because although it is true that a lot of them don't, there are a lot of them that do. So, I mean, we're kind of caught in the middle because it's not necessarily false, but it's not necessarily completely true. Now, this is going to take me all the way back to the very first figures released by McFarlane, where you're looking at Superman 1000. Now, Superman 1000 was released by McFarlane in the first wave. Still one of the better Supermans that McFarlane ever produced. And surprisingly, even though people don't really mention it a lot, he did come with alternate hands. Now, it is kind of weird that one of the hands was a trigger hand, but that became like a trope in McFarlane's figures is that a lot of times they come with trigger hands even though there's no guns. But that does kind of help us because if we do procure the weapons, the hands are already there to hold the weapons. So it was like a double-edged sword. This is going back to the very first releases from McFarlane. They've always come with accessories. I mean, even the Batman 1000 came with this like kind of weird grapnel gun that had a swirly <laughs> kind of attachment to it. And also he came with that really thick Batarang, but they were accessories that came with him. Now, I do agree that maybe he should have came with some fists. But a lot of times when companies are barely starting, you do not really get many accessories or extra hands. I mean, of course, back in the day when Legends and DC Classics were released, they never came with alternate hands. Now, they did come with some accessories, but the more each line evolved and, you know, got stronger, they released, you know, started releasing alternate hands and accessories. Now, in this day and age, of course, McFarlane, has to adapt and he tried to give us things at the beginning i would say like what other company gives you a flight stand this did come with the superman 1000 now a lot of companies sell these separate from the figure and you did actually get one with the superman so i mean he tried to give us what he could especially because the line was so new and in its infancy but this brings me into what we saw today. Now today, McFarlane did release images of the Bane that we will be getting from the Dark Knight trilogy wave. Now, of course, right away, the fury on social media was that, of course, he's not going to come with fists, like kind of <laughs> harking us back to the Bane mega fig that did not come with alternate fists. But then it was released that we are going to get extra hands with this Bane and it actually even said three pairs of hands so that is progress because also I recently reviewed the Shazam Fury of the Gods and that is like a perfect example of what we need from McFarlane he came with fists he came with alternate jazz hands and he also came with two lightning effects so that is basically like a complete package of a figure completely new sculpt and accessories now that is not per se that mcfarland doesn't give it to us because i could think of a lot of figures off the top of my head that actually came with alternate hands and accessories like the batman from the dark knight returns ways you got speeding bullets that came with alternate fists so it's just 
not necessarily true that they do not come with accessories or alternate hands. It's just that it is not consistent, which is what I would like to see from McFarlane. And I'm sure that everybody else would like to see that as well. Now, topic number two is going to be one of my favorites. And this is just like a lie and, and a stigma that has followed McFarlane from, I guess, even the Spawn days until now. And that is that McFarlane makes statues, not action figures. Now, once again, this is, has some truth to it, but it also is pretty, pretty big of a stretch. And that is because we could go back to the Batman 1000 that was also from the first wave. And you're going to have to bring this guy out and get the dust off of him. But it's very interesting to look at him and check out the articulation because basically the framework of the McFarlane articulation is here. Not much has changed, but it's just gotten better designed and better executed in the recent figures. But just starting off at the head, you have that cool tilt to the head, which other companies have barely started innovating this, even though McFarlane's been doing it since he brought this line onto market. You got nice range up and down, pretty sweet. Now you go to where he does have a forward crunch, which is <laughs> interesting because that's something that a lot of figures have been lacking. You do have double jointed elbows. You have that four way wrist articulation, which once again is more of a high end style of articulation. So it kind of makes me laugh when they try and say, McFarlane figures are statues. Look at the thighs. You got that sweet thigh swivel, which allows you to move the boot from right to left without having that disgusting thigh cut that I actually hate. Full range kicking up. Can do the complete splits. So I've never really seen a statue do the splits, but you have to remember this is from the first wave of McFarlane. Of course, the ankles are your standard up and down, right to left, rocker and toe articulation. Now, we did have a problem with the ball, ankle and wrist joints, but something that seems funny to me is how SH Figure Arts, I think, and a couple of other high-end companies actually use these balls and they don't even try and hide them. They, they're just like balls <laughs> and McFarlane just seems to get all of the heat for having ball articulation. Now, we all know that he has started to progress from this and he has started to sculpt out the ankle joints and the wrist joints, which made a lot of people very happy. And it's like I said before, this is not to say that there's not something true about this because if you look at this older figure from McFarlane, this is a McFarlane figure. Now this is basically a glorified statue. He barely has any articulation. And once you do articulate him, it really breaks up the scope because these were not intended really to move that much, very minimal articulation on these. Now the lines and the sculpt and everything and the paint on this are awesome, but that is because you're looking at five points of articulation. And over here you have over 20 points of articulation. So of course you're gonna have cuts and different design to allow for the articulation. And even the bigger figures that McFarlane makes have their articulation. All, all figures are gonna be articulated differently. Some are gonna have a little bit more than others, but that's any figure line. Not all figures are designed the same. You're looking at figures with coats of course, they're going to have restricted articulation. You're looking at big, chunky figures. Of course, they're not going to be getting into uh, acrobatic poses. <laughs> Why would you even need them to if they're like a burly, big monster? They don't need to be doing the splits or, or doing any backflips. But that's just the mentality of some fanboys that really makes me laugh. And that goes into a lot of different topics um, about McFarlane. But no, he does not make statues. They are actually highly articulated and he's actually made other companies have to catch up with him and start adjusting their articulation and design to more of a McFarlane style. 
articulation. Now this brings me into another thing that, <laughs> that is a lie. Well, not this isn't really a lie. I think it's just like a misunderstanding. And that is that McFarlane figures do not stand on their own. Now, if you know me and you know my channel, I'm notorious for being able to stand figures and, you know, balance them and get them in all kinds of different poses. Now, McFarlane does include a black DC multiverse stand with, with most of his figures. And like I always say in my reviews, these are not really needed, but sometimes they do come in useful. It just depends. Now, it's not to say that all figures stand on their own easily or that each figure doesn't have its own little like sweet spot that you have to get it in, but it is kind of fun for me and it is kind of an art to be able to get different figures to stand. Of course, I had my own adventures with like Etragon. He was one that I really had to like figure out how to stand him and I actually in the end I did uh, figure out how to stand him like Gorilla Grodd. The first Gorilla Grodd was another one that you had to really know how to stand him and you wouldn't have a problem. But each figure, you know, you got to give it a little bit of bend to the knee, a little bit of tilt forward, depending on if it has a cape. Like, let's just say this one, the Batman 1000, I have been moving him around and I laid a little bit of the articulation. But now if I want him to stand, even though he does have a pretty thick old school cape you just get him in there and feel it he wants a little bit more forward maybe you have to swivel the feet out a little bit so you might have to move him around a little bit but once you find that little spot where he stands it's not really a big problem to get him to stand so no it's not that mcfarland figures do not stand on their own no figures stand on their own all figures must be put in a standing position by us so you have to put in the work and you know some figures will be easy you just get them and, and stamp them on the ground and they just stand but some you know take a little bit more work but for me that is one of the fun parts of collecting this line is having fun posing them and you know taking pictures of them so yes mcfarland figures are able to stand but you have to get them to stand as well as any other figure line. You have to stand them up yourself. They're not just going to stand on their own. Because just like all action figure lines, some are very hard to stand. Some balance really well. Some break. You know, all lines have breakage issues or QC issues or paint issues. So that's one thing we need to move away from. And that is like blaming one line that it breaks or, or they're more liable to have paint defects all lines have issues it doesn't matter what lines they are and in fact there's other companies that i know since i've been collecting have more of a reputation of breakage right out of the box than mcfarland does <laughs> all right so now we're gonna get a little bit spicy in this one and here's a big thing that everybody always gets their panties up in a bunch about and that is of course McFarlane hates female figures or he doesn't like them which of course is blasphemous and not true if you know anything about McFarlane he actually championed female figures when he had the spawn line of uh, Angela Tiffany tons of female figures that probably would never be made by another company because I do think that this is where McFarlane got his experience to see what figures sell more than others. And of course, I'm not going to say that we haven't, like, times have not changed, but regular consumers, regular people that are not into comics or know a lot about superheroes have not changed. They still walk down the aisle and peruse the, the toy aisle and they see what they know, they see what they like, and it's definitely not gonna be obscure characters or female figures, it's just the way it is. Now, when McFarlane took over the multiverse sign, he did say that he's gonna play the numbers game, which means that he's making a mass-produced line that's gonna sell to the general audience of people. Now, that doesn't mean that he won't give 
us collectors, you know, every once in a while, a figure and be like, boom, there it is. That's what you guys wanted. But if you know anything about action figure lines, collectors are mostly a smaller percentage of the sales. Now, I'm not going to say that it hasn't risen because obviously it has, but it's still not the majority of sales. Now, of course, we know this from DC Universe Classics, which at first was like selling gangbusters and they did a lot of Batman, Superman, Green Lantern, Flash, like more like more of your, you know, iconic superheroes. But towards the end of the line to the end of its run, they started wanting to, you know, please more of a collector and they released more female figures, more obscure characters, a lot of villains. And of course what happened, the sales decreased. They had a lot of figures going straight to clearance. And of course that was the end of DC Universe Classics. Now it did try to live on at Maddie Collector, which was like an online, but even that did not have enough numbers to keep producing the figures. Now there is a channel on YouTube, you could go and check it out straight from the horse's mouth, which he was the director of DC Universe Classics. And he said it on his own, that once they got away from the main superhero characters like Batman and Superman, it really was the demise of the line. So we don't want to play that game here with McFarlane. We want to, to enjoy any obscure characters or, or, or female figures. But we do have to understand that the regular consumer going down the toy aisle eight times out of ten is only going to recognize Batman or Superman or even the Joker or any <laughs> Bat family member. But obscure characters and even villains. McFarlane said this himself. He said that female figures, he goes, and even villains are don't sell the numbers that it's your main superhero figures actually sell now if you want to battle with me about this we just have to go and look at the numbers right now they're starting to release the blue batman hush and i have actually looked at it myself there's three websites that were selling the blue batman hush along with all the other characters the the other batman superboy mr freeze Catwoman, all of these figures were in the same sites. Guess who sold out first at all the sites? Blue Batman Hush. So you have nobody to blame but yourself because whenever a Batman figure is released, I mean, usually it does good numbers. And this brings me into tie it into today where they, they showed the pictures of the Bane but also, they had recently shown the pictures of the Bale Dark Knight from the same wave. And of course, everybody was, you know, ecstatic about this and giving it praise. And of course, I'm looking forward to it as well. But what you have to remember is it's another Batman. But it's going to sell. It's going to keep the line going. And that will allow us to bring in more female figures, more villains and make a more complete line without killing the line. And this is a good segue into the final topic, and that is that McFarlane only makes Batman <laughs> figures. Now, this is kind of true and kind of false, but it is a really big misconception, and that is because I wouldn't say right now that DC Multiverse is a is a pure Batman line, but it is a Batman heavy line. But that of course is a necessary evil to keep the line selling the numbers that it needs to sell. And one thing that makes me laugh about this argument all the time is that they say that other companies should get the license because all McFarlane makes is Batman. It is a Batman heavy line, like I said, but we have also received tons of speedsters, tons of Superman, figures and Superman related figures and right now I actually have a huge collection that has more figures than just Batman and one of the main things that like gets on my nerves about this is that any company that has the DC license is going to milk Batman any company 
you could you could give the rights back to Mattel right now, but they would make a lot of Batman. They would make a lot of Superman. And the reason they would do that is to keep the line selling. And another interesting little fact that I've noticed is that you could even look at high-end lines, statues, whatever you want to look at. All these lines are Batman heavy. A lot of the figures they make, a lot of the statues they make are Batman, Batman related. So you cannot just put this stigma on McFarlane. You have to put it on, on any company that is that has the DC license and is allowed to make DC figures. And don't tell me it's not true because I know for sure that if you look at Mezco or you look at Moffix, a lot of the figures are Batman <laughs> figures. And every once in a while you'll get a different character or, you know, a uh, Superman. But most of the time it is Batman. Go look and check what they have released. So yes, McFarlane does make a lot of Batman figures, but it is not all Batman. But also, yes, it has to be done to keep the sales where we need them to be to keep the line going. So anyways, guys, that's just my thoughts on these topics. Go ahead and tell me what you think down below. But you guys keep hunting out there. Keep collecting. Keep customizing. And I will see you on the next one. Call me Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman.